In this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to send audio from your MIDI keyboard to your loop station. If that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Hey, what's up? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, I'm Ben Rollins and this channel's all about live loop and upload three videos just like this one every single week. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Now there's a couple things you're going to need for today's tutorial. You're going to need a laptop, you're then going to also need a MIDI keyboard, an audio interface, and finally, I'm assuming you've already got this, a loop station. So let's jump straight to today's tutorial. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to plug our USB devices into our laptop. So that includes our keyboard and our audio interface. Now the audio interface I am using today is the Complete Audio 6 by Native Instruments. I really like this audio interface because it's really easy to route external out for the audio, which is essential for today's tutorial. And I'll get onto that a little bit later on in the video. But let's crack on and plug our devices into our computer. So once all of your USB devices have been plugged in to your computer, you can now boot up your DAW. Now today I'm gonna to use Ableton Live, but you can use pretty much any digital audio workstation such as Logic, etc. Now please do let me know in the comment section down below what software you are using because the reason why I use Ableton Live is it's universal across Mac and Windows, so it means more people can follow along with these tutorials. But it would be interesting for me to know for future tutorials to kind of cater it to help you out a little bit more. So what we want to do is before we do anything else, we want to head over to our preferences and jump into this audio tab. Make sure our audio interface is selected. So mine's the complete audio six and we want it to be selected for our input and output device. Then just check the input config, everything's selected, yep. And then the output config, everything is selected. If it isn't, just click on it like that. We're then gonna jump into our link MIDI tab. And as you can see here, we have input Q49 and output Q49. Now this is obviously my MIDI keyboard because it's the Alesis Q49. So you just wanna make sure that you have remote turned on for input and output so we can use it as a MIDI remote within the software. Now that's everything set up, we can exit out. Now by default in Ableton Live, you have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks when you boot up a brand new set. So we just need one MIDI track today, so we'll delete that one and we'll delete this spare audio track over here. We'll rename this one to MIDI Keyboard and then we'll rename this one to RC300. We'll make it red as well, so you know it matches our red loop pedal. We're then gonna use this little tab over here to get our instruments. I'm just gonna type in piano in the top, literally keys, whatever this one will do, and drag and drop it onto our MIDI track. We can then close that, we're pretty much ready to rock. Now, you'll see nothing's happening when I click these buttons in, and that's because we need to record arm this track here. Now, you will see we have, we have a signal coming through when we play these notes. So now we've got our MIDI keyboard set up, it's now time to get our loop pedal. Now the loop pedal I'm gonna be using today is the Boss RC300. If you wanna learn more about the Boss RC300, check out this playlist over here where I have loads of information on how you can use this looper pedal. But the next thing we're gonna need is two guitar leads. Now I've got a white and a black lead so you can clearly tell where each cable is going. So let's start with our white cable. So the white cable we are gonna plug into our main output of our Boss RC300. We are then gonna route this all the way to our audio interface and we're gonna plug it into input number one. Make sure you have all of your outputs turned down so you don't pop anything or hurt your ears. You're then gonna set the gain to a reasonable level that's pretty healthy, nothing peaking, and then we can head over to the interesting part. Now this interesting part is how we are gonna route the audio from out of Ableton Live into our looper pedal. So we're gonna take our black guitar lead and we're gonna plug this into the left mono input of our Boss RC300. 
300. Now you can do this in stereo, but just to simplify the tutorial, I'm just using one cable and we're running mono, but you can run two cables to the left and right to run stereo if you desire. So if we look on the back of our audio interface, you can see we have a load of inputs and outputs. Now, these two here, left and right, are outputs one and two. So this is our main out for going to our PA system and things like that. But on the other side, we have out three and out four. So this could be run in stereo, three and four, but we're just gonna run it in mono and use out number three. We then can put this back down and jump into our software. So back in Ableton Live, if we look over to the right, you can see we have a reverb and delay. So these are send and return tracks. Now, normally a send and return track, we can um, basically send a certain amount of one of our audio channels, either MIDI or audio, to delay, and then you'll get a certain amount of delay. You can rack it up to full, or you can put it to like 10%, whatever. You get really good control. Now in Logic, these are referred to as buses, but they are exactly the same. So what I'm doing here, just repeat that in Logic, but with the bus feature. So we are gonna create a brand new return track, insert return track right there. And then we're gonna call this RC300 in. So this is what we are routing from out of Ableton into the RC300. We can then turn our send track C up to full on our MIDI keyboard and make sure the audio two is set to sends only because we don't want it to come out of the master because the audio is gonna double up because when it's coming out of our RC300 and Ableton at the same time, it's just gonna start sounding really weird because it's the same sound layering over itself. So just make sure you have that to sends only. We then jump over to our RC300 return track and set the audio to from master to external out. Now by default, it'll be external out one and two, which is our master out. So obviously we don't want this because it's basically the exact same output as before. So we're gonna change this to either three and four if you're running it in stereo or just number three because that's what we have one cable plugged into. So now we have a mono output going into the input of our RC300. We then are gonna come back to this white cable we plugged in earlier, which is our Boss RC300's main output. And when we trace this back, we plug this into input one of our audio interface. So on our RC300 track, we're gonna make sure our external in is set to input number one, put the monitor to auto, and then record arm this track. Now, as I play chords on my keyboard here, you will notice that on Ableton, the audio is now coming through our RC300 100% correctly. And now I can record the keyboard into my Boss RC300, like so. Record and record and then boom. You can hear it is now looping back. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving me a like and a subscribe. This channel is all about live looping upload, live looping tutorials, live looping performances every Tuesday, Thursday, and now Saturdays. I've been Ben Rollins. You can find me online at benrollinsmusic.com. If you want to learn more about live looping, check out this video over here, and I will see you in the next one.